Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another Star Wars video. Today we will once again be talking about the Zeiston class Star Destroyer. In prior videos, we've covered some of the lore of the ship, some of my real world thoughts about the design and its placement in episode 9, but today we'll be looking specifically at where the gigantic fleet of Zeiston class Star Destroyers actually came from. Before we do though, today's video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Right now you're probably spending a lot of time at your computer. Not only do you want your web browsing to be safe and secure, but maybe you want to check out Netflix from another country or get access to geo-locked services. With Surfshark VPN, you can protect your privacy and help to protect against things like data logging and intrusive advertisements. You can also easily bypass geo-blocking. For example, do you want to watch something on Disney Plus, maybe something Star Wars related that's not available in your country? Also, here's a hint, things often release early earlier in Australia or New Zealand, even if it's just a few hours earlier. If you're impatient like me, then you can use Surfshark VPN to get them literally as soon as possible. Surfshark gives you all the access you need, just connect to the server and refresh the page. If you don't need it, just turn it off. If you do need it, it's very, very simple to start. Right now, you can use the code Eckhart's Ladder and follow the link down in the description for an 85% discount on Surfshark VPN, which unlocks the best price in the market, plus three extra months for free. Again, the link is down in the description. Thanks a lot, Surfshark, for sponsoring today's video. Now, on with the content. So, the Zeiston class was a massive and, as the episode 9 says, horrifically powerful capital ship presented to Kylo Ren and the First Order by Palpatine and the Sith Loyalists at Exegol. So there's been a few discrepancies regarding how many Zeistons actually exist, but in the Rise of Skywalker novelization, it's explicitly said that there were over 10,000 Zeistons, each of which was 2,500 meters long, i.e. larger than an Imperial II class Star Destroyer, it had an axial super laser, and it was just generally very, very powerful. Without getting too critical, it actually boggles the mind how this many ships could be created out of basically thin air. Nobody from the Resistance had even a hint that the Zeiston fleet was in production. And it's not like these were refit Imperial One class Star Destroyers. They're based on the Imperial One design, but they're much larger. That would have been an interesting explanation, I think. It would have explained why the Empire lost so many Star Destroyers seemingly overnight, and how their power dwindled to the point where the New Republic was able to take over. So where do they come from? And we gotta try to piece together the answer. We don't know everything, but we can take what's given and also make some assumptions. So let's look at what's confirmed. So the first important point here is that the Zeistins do not seem to have been any sort of Imperial project. They were apparently produced almost totally by the Sith Loyalists who had been inhabiting Exegol. The only thing we don't know is when they started work on these ships, but I think it's implied that it was only after the death of Palpatine. Here's a quote from the Rise of Skywalker novelization. For a generation my disciples have labored, Emperor Palpatine said, his voice dark and deep. Kylo's heart was racing. So much power, a star field of destroyers, the largest fleet the galaxy had ever seen. And then this is the key part. The rumors were all true. Exegol was a world populated by the Sith Eternal, true believers in the dark side of the Force, devoting their lives to this. Then Palpatine says, they've built a fleet that will bring an end to the Galactic Rebellion once and for all. So the Sith Eternal, this group that's been hiding away on Exegol, or at least within the Unknown Regions, is the one responsible for these ships. The novelization also gives us the perspective of certain individuals within the Final Order, or the Sith Eternal, I guess at that point. We've got one excerpt that I mentioned earlier from Captain Sabrand, who's actually the commander of that Star Destroyer that blows up Kajimi. And basically we learn that she was raised in isolation within the Unknown Regions, that she spent the vast majority of her life in the Exegol underground and that she's never been outside the unknown regions. However, one thing that I found interesting is that the text explicitly says that some of the other Final Order officers were not raised on Exegol. Although many were, others were from various planets in the unknown region. So it's very possible that there were several Sith strongholds which were basically working to help create this fleet. As a note, one thing that I didn't pick up on when I read this is that the Sith were also stealing First Order children. Basically, the highest potential ones would be kidnapped and brought into this even more secret and elite force. Okay, so we've got Star Destroyers, we've got several Sith 
strongholds most likely, but that still doesn't really answer the how. How were these ships made? Where exactly did they come from? Is there some sort of star forge or machine in the inside of Exegol? Was there massive space factories that were always just out of sight? Well, let's look at the evidence for this as well. The Zeistin page for the episode 9 guide specifically states that Sith loyalists had infiltrated the boards of Kuan and Trala, basically the major shipbuilders, and that money and information was being funneled to the greater Sith faction in the unknown regions. Presumably the Sith were embedded in many of the major financial sectors of the galaxy, and that they were a source of resources, but we also know that the First Order operated somewhat as a testbed for Final Order technology. The Mandator Star Destroyer, for example, helped to inform the gun on the Zeistin, and it's very possible that even earlier than that, Imperial ships were serving as beta test beds for eventual Zeistin or other projects. And I think a good example of this would be something like the Onager class, which was a Star Destroyer during the time of the Empire with a miniature super laser, much smaller, not planet destroying, but still helpful in developing the eventual project for sure. So the last thing I want to look at though is the actual mechanics of how these ships were built. We know the where, they were probably built in the unknown regions. We know how they were getting resources and designs, but how were they actually physically producing the ships? The only real clues we get about this is from the movie itself. We see them rising out of the ground and the episode 9 art book, which I think has some interesting information. First of all, there was art done for major first order factories. Some were in space, others were on Exegol itself, and Exegol initially had the Star Destroyers rising from large hangars within the planet itself, which to me would indicate that that's where they were built. However, and the art book says this explicitly, JJ liked the imagery of the Star Destroyers being buried, basically with dirt and debris falling off them as they rise out of the planet's surface. To me, that indicates that maybe the ships were built somewhere else. I don't see any reasonable way they could just be built in the planet's surface then like pass up through osmosis or something. I think they were made in shipyards somewhere in the unknown region, perhaps many shipyards, perhaps one. Then for some reason they were buried on Exegol, maybe just to stay out of notice. Now, it's not clear when exactly this would have been completed. They're described as newly minted Star Destroyers, but that could come from the fact that they're seeing action for the first time. And again, this is all just speculation based on stuff from the art book, which is not even canon. But looking at the movie itself, I do think that is a pretty good estimation of what happened. So just to summarize, Exegol and perhaps other worlds served as the main housing place for the Zeistans and also where they trained Final Order officers and Sith loyalists. Funds were being brought in from across the galaxy through embedded Sith, and in my opinion, shipyards for a generation were pumping out these ships and then burying them within the surface of Exegol. But that's just my opinion. What do you think of my analysis? Does it make sense? Did I make a mistake along the way? Let me know all of that and more down in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching, guys. As always, this has been Eckhart's Ladder. Have a good one, and may the Force be with you.